air compression is uh, probably one of the biggest users of electricity um, in the world, using uh, roughly 10% in Europe of the electricity produced. So there is uh, um, a need for uh, higher efficiency. The blade compressor is a uh, novel air compression or gas compression machine. What happens with a piston and cylinder is that as this piston drops down in its cylinder, it draws air in above it, and as it goes up again, it compresses air in front of it. You could imagine this as a piston and cylinder, but the piston's been wrapped around. So if you look at the orange piece here, the orange piece you can see forms the piston. There's a constantly open intake port below it where my finger is. As the piston rotates, it induces a volume behind it in the same way as the piston dropping down in a cylinder. As it gets to this point, it's induced a complete volume behind it. And the neat thing is that unlike the piston and cylinder that then changes in direction, as the blade comes through, or piston comes through the disc, the volume that was trapped behind the piston is now in front. So it's being compressed in front while it's inducing a new volume behind it. So it has a continuous cycle of inducing behind and compressing in front. Our current projections will, are putting it somewhere between 15 to 25% better than the majority of air compressors in use. We've initially focused on three key applications where we can make an important difference in saving energy. The first is sewage sludge aeration, so blowing air through sewage to purify it. The second is automotive supercharging. This device, because of its unique properties, allows you to downsize engines and so run with a much smaller engine, more fuel efficient in your car. And the final one is for industrial compressed air, the kind of compressed air that powers a factory like this. It has a, a very easy dynamic variable displacement device. Uh, one of the most important things about this is that you can reduce the displacement as you would when cruising down the motorway rather than accelerating. In those conditions, the loss of efficiency is, is very small. It maintains a high efficiency throughout the, the range of usage. Lodge was already securing customers and partners in its initial three target markets, but there's a lot more to do after that. This application can go very widely, so we can build into industrial air markets, process gas markets, there's a biomass uh, application as a heat expander, and then there's engine applications, in particular combined heat and power. So we're just at the start of that process. It would have been difficult to do this without the Carbon Trust because a new technology like this uh, is uh, quite hard to, to sell to people before it reaches a level where it has proved itself. And that's where the Carbon Trust came in to develop the initial idea to a functioning prototype. The Carbon Trust is not just about money, it's about skills, it's about connections, it's also about credibility. Working with the Carbon Trust and being in some ways uh, connected to the Carbon Trust is very valuable to us in terms of credibility as a small company.